Welcome to our study today on Genesis chapter 49. As we come into this chapter, we have seen how that in many instances we could say that Jacob is a prophet as he comes into these verses. And that the things that are said here in Genesis chapter 49 could only be said had Jacob been guided by the Holy Spirit of God. And uh, because many of these things that he says are prophetic in nature and it would be impossible for him to know uh, apart from God telling him these things. Jacob is about to die, and as we mentioned in previous days, he is um, going through the various sons and saying his last words to each one of them before he passes from this scene. And we've been looking at uh, the sons of Leah in verses 1 through 15. It's interesting to notice how each one of them is mentioned. Of course, Reuben was the firstborn. He was unstable as water because he uh, committed incest with his father's wife. We saw that Simeon and Levi were known as instruments of cruelty in verses 5 through 7. In verses 8 through 12, on our last day of study, we saw Judah, the lion's whelp. And today I want to read about a couple of sons and see what it says. First of all, there's Zebulon by the sea in verse 13. And then in verses 14 and 15, we see Issachar the strong. So let's read Genesis chapter 49, verses 13 through 15 as we get ready to look into these verses today. It says, Zebulon shall dwell at the haven of the sea, and he shall be for an haven of ships, and his border shall be unto Zidon. Issachar is a strong ass, couching down between two burdens, and he saw that rest was good, and the land that it was pleasant, and bowed his shoulder to bear, and became a servant unto tribute. So as we come into these verses, I want you to notice, first of all, Zebulon by the sea in verse 13. Uh, note that as we come through these verses that we go from the fourth son of Jacob to the tenth son of Jacob. And uh, Christ was to come out of Judah. And the reason for that is we're looking at Leah's children here. He's talking to Leah's children. Keep in mind there were some born to the concubines in between this. And we'll look at them in future days. Christ was to come out of Judah, but he was going to live in the land of Zebulon. Um, and as you look at Zebulon in the scriptures, there's a number of things we can learn about them. Let me just give you a couple of verses that give us an overview. First of all, if we come to Judges chapter 5, Judges 5 and verse 18, we see that Deborah praised Zebulon. It says there, Zebulon and Naphtali were a people that jeoparded their lives unto the death in the high places of the field. So they talk about the fact of standing their ground and, and of defending that which was there. Saying, and this reminds us that Zebulon were, was a people that was faithful to David. And they were not of a double heart. Uh, to see that, come to 1 Chronicles chapter 12. In 1 Chronicles chapter 12, we're going to look verse, first of all at verse 33, where it says this about Zebulon. It says, Of Zebulon, such as went forth to battle, expert in war, with all instruments of war, 50,000, which could keep rank, they were not of a double heart. So they were not of a double heart. Certainly that is what we need today, friends. We need some Christians in our churches who are not of a double heart, who are not double-minded, as James speaks about, and being unstable in all their ways. But, oh, friends, how we need a heart that is wholly given to the Lord Jesus Christ and what he wants. In 1 Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 40, it says, Moreover, they that were nigh unto them, even unto Issachar and Zebulon and Aphtali, brought bread on asses and on camels and on mules and on oxen and meat, meal, cakes of figs and bunches of raisins, and wine and oil and oxen and sheep abundantly, for there was joy in Israel. So there we see their willingness to help and providing for the soldiers and things of that nature. And it's interesting as you go back into Genesis chapter 49, that it talks about it being a haven of ships and a seafaring people. And you can see that in a number of other, in a couple of other passages that you can look at. Well, come with me if you would. Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4, verse 15. And also, we're not going to take time to read it, but I encourage you, Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 through 7, also gives us some relevant information regarding Zebulon and who they were. But in Matthew 4, verse 15, it says, The land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtalim, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of 
the Gentiles. And it says that they would be a haven of ships. What can you and I learn from that? Well, what we learn from that very simply is this. Divine providence determines our service. In other words, God will place us in the area that he wants us to serve, and he will equip us to do that which he wants us to do. Zebulon, living by the sea, became a haven for ships. Where Zebulon lived determined his service. You know, if Zebulon had lived in the desert, he could not have been a haven for ships, but he'd have to be something else. Friends, God's callings are practical. They fit our divinely ordered situation where God places us, or God places us where he wants us so that we can serve him in the way that he wants us to serve him. So that's what we see as we look at Zebulon. But then there's Naphtali, in, or Issachar rather, in verses 14 and 15, and he's described as being strong. Um, and the reason why I say that was because the ass was a useful animal, and it was no disgrace to be called one. Um, here we see that, that what he's reminding them of is that Issachar was a strong people. They would be a people that would bear burdens. And as you, and, and friends, we need people today that will bear burdens. You know, it, it's true that we all have our burdens to bear, but there are those that, there are some that God has called that can be Barnabases that come alongside of people and encourage them in their time of difficulty. And I know the Bible tells us in Galatians 6, we are to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. And that's what we're reminded of as we look at Issachar. Issachar, Issachar did indeed bear burdens. And that was a tribe that grew to be very numerous and strong. Uh, if you look at them uh, in Numbers chapter 26 and verse 25, you'll see there, that, that tribe then numbered 64,300. But by the time you get over to 1 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 5, you'll see that they increased to 87,000 people. So they increased by almost 23,000. And friends, Issachar pictures one who is strong becoming a servant unto tribute. And that speaks to us as well. Issachar was strong, but through love of ease and pleasure, he became bound. And, uh, oh, friends, what a powerful word that has to say to us. Because he was willing to sacrifice freedom and independence in order to enjoy creature comforts. And that is a sure way to destroy yourself. And it's sad but true that there are so many today that would rather be e live at ease and be comfortable for a time than to realize, friends, we got a battle to fight. We've got to stand our ground or we will not have ground to stand. I'm speaking of Christians today in this great country of Canada. People are living at ease. People are complacent. People are just uh, living lives of ease and they're not understanding and they're not seeing that Christianity is under attack in our country. And if we do not stand our ground and if we do not defend our ground and if we do not stand for that which is right and stand against that which is wrong, friends, the day is going to come when we will have what we have now taken from us. And there will be many that will be sitting there and scratching their heads and wondering why in the world and how in the world it happened. And they will fail to see that it happened because the soldiers of Christ uh, lived at ease when we should have been standing, when we should have been defending, when we should have been going forward. Oh, friend, let me encourage you today. Stand for that which God wants us to stand for and do not be given over to a life of ease and through the ease be brought into bondage. Oh, friends, let's stand as a people of God and having done all to stand. Have a great day.